Welcome to the Real Mama Pod. I'm your host, Devin. And I'm your host, Kendra. We are real moms. Sharing real experiences. The, the things people, people don't tell, tell you. Hey, mama. Hey, friend. How you doing? I'm good. Wake up because you sound tired. Okay. I understand <laughs> that's it's Thursday. That's the truth. That is, that's but real life. You need to wake up. <laughs> that was that was feedback from your husband. Oh, whatever. Okay? <laughs> Our biggest if- credit. If husband had a long day like me, then he'd be just as tired. Well, <laughs> but I will try to sound more years. lively in my conversation with y'all. That sounds so much better. How are so, you? I'm good, y'all. But let me just tell you this. I got a chemical pill this weekend and I did not time this correctly. So don't mind my skin. If you're watching the YouTube, you know, I got this hat on. That is your uh, cue to go to our website and get your mama hat. You see, it's real cute. Um, but yeah, if y'all see some skin dropping, you know why. Okay, don't judge me. Ain't nobody see no skin <laughs> dropping in this video. I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> you, you peeling like a snake over there? Yes, the boys okay. want to kiss me. They're like, mommy, I don't want your peels touching me. Oh, no. That's so rude. No, they're so mean. Kids are so rude. Anyway, they are. Y'all know we stay with guests. Yes. And this time we're lucky enough to have two guests mm-hmm. and their fellow podcasters. Yeah. Which is cool because they understand the haze that we have to go through <laughs> with keeping up with this podcast. So yes. we have the Millenni Her podcast. Mm-hmm. And these two ladies have been. So nice and sweet and mm-hmm. have been fun to get to know. Yes. Um, and they, like I said, they understand how it feels to be black women in this podcast world and having to navigate so many avenues. And they're just bosses in everything that they do. Yes. Um, so I'm going to give a quick rundown of who we have. Okay. So we have Ariel and Cheryl's. From the Millennial Her podcast. And I see you waving, Cheryl. You can say, you can come off mute. <laughs> She's on mute. She's yes. like, do we have to mute? Hey, Cheryl. <laughs> um, but Ariel and Cheryl, they are a dynamic duo. And like I mentioned uh, for the third time now, they are with the Millennial Her podcast. Mm-hmm. And Ariel is a mama. Uh, she is, uh, I would call her, uh, or I have written here. She is like a journal, like she's really, she's a seasoned journalist. That's what I have. Mm -hmm. And she's worked with many huge media outlets. And Mm -hmm. for her to be in this space as a journalist is gold. Like she has so many ways of having these conversations and knowing how to have good, rich conversations in Mm -hmm. whatever. And especially from a black woman's perspective and Cheryl's. So when I was reading Cheryl's bio, I had like her, her background just kind of gave me a heart tug. Like she is so mm-hmm. passionate about social work and social justice and advocacy. Mm-hmm. She is a Haitian American and she's very, you know, that it's. Stop uh, by it's, say. <laughs> Devin had been to Haiti. So she thinks she Haitian. <laughs> Y'all know I'm an honorary uh, Haitian. <laughs> but she, she's also like a boss in what she does, even though social work is her trade, essentially, she has experience working in the media industry as well, Mm -hmm. more so on the production side. And she has done like amazing work with Amanda Seals and various hip hop related podcasts. So I feel personally very honored to have both of them here because they are amazing black women who are doing great things. So welcome Ariel and Cheryl's from the Millennial Her podcast to the Real Mama Pod. Welcome, Thank ladies. For us. And Cheryl's is a dog mama. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dog mama. Yes. Yes. She's a dog mama. <laughs> yes. 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 Welcome. <laughs> Thank welcome. Thank you for welcome. having us, ladies. Yes. Thanks yes. for coming. Thanks, Thanks for, for coming. Here. I'm yes. so excited to talk to you, ladies, today. We're excited to have you. So, y'all know we have a limited amount of time. So, let's get right into it, okay? Briefly tell us about your journey to friendship. So, we usually ask our guests, briefly tell us your journey into mamahood. But I feel like this is unique to y'all because y'all have a podcast, y'all are friends, y'all are sorority sisters. So, let's talk about that. Okay, so me and Ari, we met in college because we're both members of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. Shouts to Zeta, shouts to D9. <laughs> um, originally, our friendship kind of grew because I was originally podcasting. I used to be a part of a hip-hop podcast that talked about entertainment. 
and social justice. And Ari was starting her own podcast about motherhood, mental health. So she reached out to me for some advice about how to start a podcast. Mm -hmm. At the time, I was leaving my other podcast. So Ari was just like, girl, you might as well just hop on this train and we, we could start our own podcast. And that's how the Millennia Her podcast was born. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Y'all went to college together. Me and Devin went to college together. Well, we went to two different universities. Okay. Okay. Uh, We're both both Zetas from Jersey, and Jersey is, like, big but small. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Zeta from Jersey, most likely you know other Zetas from Jersey. Yeah. Gotcha. So you did not go to the same college, but being in the same sorority in a small state like New Jersey, you all were able to connect in that way. Yes. Gotcha. I love it. Love the sisterhood. Gotcha. Thank so, you. <laughs> so um, both of you are apparently a part of this podcast. And as you know, podcast is business, right? It's a lot of business aside from the work that, you know, with putting out the, the actual podcast. But when it comes to being friends, too, like how do you all set boundaries or, or keep them rather um, with being friends and owning a business together? <laughs> I like Are you gonna start or like, you want me to start? Listen, I just feel like it's it's still a work in progress. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's still a work in progress. We try, you know, we've we've had our humps uh because only because friendship level, friendship, friendship wise, we're both she's a Taurus, I'm a I'm a Sagittarius. We mm. mesh very well. Friend like on across the scale both loyal both can have a great time both mean business you know are headstrong so those are great qualities as friends as p- business partners i think it gets to be um the same idea and the same mission that's why that's what keeps us grounded mm-hmm. i feel on our business level but necessarily our our ways of how we intend to get there differ. And so that's mm-hmm. like made differ at times. And that's what usually causes clashing or difference in opinions. But how we've been able to balance that, we re- we started later. It came much later. We were just like not enjoying each other's company after a while. Like, you know, it wasn't mm-hmm. like we, we noticed it even. It was just naturally, we weren't talking anymore unless it was about business. And then we were, and then kind of go on our separate ways. Um, or like we're at, we'll be at a party, you know, sipping some wine. And next, you know, we're like, did you see, did you send that podcast interview? Did, like, no, this is not the time. We're trying to socialize and have a good time. So we decided that like we're, we were going to have set meetings to check in, to discuss what's going on. And we'd always reserve like 15, 20 minutes either before or after the business call to finish complete business and then jump into personal if we wanted to or we just knew if it wasn't really a set meeting then it's personal time Mm -hmm. and hey or hey girl i'm here to talk about business so let's just talk about it or this is a personal venting session let's just talk about it kind of similar to just friends in general where you are you may be that friend that always has a person coming to you venting about their life but you're like uh, I thought this was a, a chat, a regular chat, right. and we really just wanted somebody to listen to them. It's kind of like the same spiel. And I think once we got into that rhythm, we've been good ever since. So that's um, how we've been able to maintain just business, so to, personal, keep it pushing. You have to go through a, a few things to mm-hmm. kind of figure Definitely. out how to to keep business like this, friendship like this, and make sure everybody gets along in their spaces. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I just to just to piggyback off of what she says, I feel like naturally our personalities kind of balance each other because um Ari can be a type A personality compared <laughs> to me, I could be more chill. Mm-hmm. So whenever she's like in her type A, I could tell her like, All right, Ari, it's cool to chill out. Or if I'm too chill, she'll tell me, like, All right, it's time for you to step up and do do more. So we balance each other out in that way too. Yeah, that's funny. Me and that's Devin definitely. have similar. Yeah, yes. I'm more chill. Devin's like, we got it. It's like, girl, we good. Like, just, 
<laughs> she be it's too gonna, good though. Yeah, <laughs> like she girl, got a vibe. It's gonna, it's gonna get done. So, and I'm, I'm not type A, <laughs> but I do have like some Virgo tendencies. So when I'm like, so on how it, can you not be? How can you be a Virgo? Like, well, you're not a Virgo. So a I'm a Leo, Leo but, like, but I'm on a. But cuss. you have Virgo tendencies. I have yes, some tendencies. I'm gonna be like, does. I don't so, think that goes in the same category. Yeah, Virgo so I, I can be chill, but when it comes to ki- when you line me and Kendra up, I'm the type A one. Because <laughs> she's just gone with the wind. She's just flowing. Just going wherever the wind That's blows her. Doing. And I'm like, we need to be on the straight and narrow. Like, what? Is she like, we go straight. Yeah, no, we go be, be a, goals. The goals we be a little zigzag. We don't they be straight. It be a zigzag. Just like this. Just, they, it, okay. As long as we meet the goal, it's going to happen. The goal going to get yeah. met. But, yeah, Devin is so, like, yeah. what, two days before Virgo's? starts isn't yeah it? like, like yeah, three she, two three three days yeah the 23rd i'm the 20th so i definitely have some virgo in me and the older i get the more i see it um but that's another another, that's another podcast conversation. episode yeah right I'm um, gonna say, get, get into astrology right, us on that that's a whole other, right <laughs> we can really get into it yeah, so talking about setting boundaries and things like that, how do you guys support each other in your respective roles? Because y'all kind of have two different lifestyles in a sense. You're a mom, a wife, Ari, and then Charles, you're a dog mom, traveling the world, jet setting, just going where you want to go, girl, <laughs> living your best life. So how do y'all respect <laughs> each other and support each other through your different roles? I think it all comes down to communication. Um with Ari, she is a mom, so I know that with her twins, it's like a certain time when it comes to podcast work, nights mm-hmm. work best for her because mm-hmm. that's when her kids go to sleep. So it all comes down to communication um, for me, I feel like. Okay. What about for you, Ari? Communication, grace, understanding, I think, is key to... Um, how do we support each other's respective roles? I think is also, you know, removing ego mm. um, when it comes to ego, pride, uh, and trying to also have um, what I, I want to say, like care, an extra level of care. Because again, when we talked about your previous question, how you layered it is like talk, talk about the friendship, how to separate. It's, I think we both are very conscious of how we want to speak to each other Mm -hmm. as partners and friends overall. Sometimes one may overlap greater than the other, but I think that, you know, like you said, it's that communication and that balance to try to reel it all in. Yeah. So I definitely think that's key because like, for example, Cheryl's before she, she, I was so glad that she got into production. That was also always a, that was something I discovered about her as we can continued in the podcast but she wasn't maybe well versed in the field mm-hmm. but she still learned like she took on more challenges within the the our 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 platform she wanted to edit more i mm-hmm. was grateful to, to to not have to you know be involved in that process because right. it's a whole different process mm-hmm. and i'm trying to my brain is trying to go over here and now i gotta edit and stuff so when she was like i'm i want to edit i want to do it myself she went from like you said Kendra, your audio editing, Devin, your video editing, Mm -hmm. and she started taking it on all of that step by step. Then Mm -hmm. here she goes with Amanda Stills. Then she's, you know, off doing her own new latest project. She has her own um, segment of our podcast um, that she does with by herself. So Mm -hmm. it all kind of in with the support of the platform. I, in understanding that that's something she wanted to do, I feel like that was what continued to keep that going. Right. Kudos to you, Cheryl. Yes, good job. I love Affecting that. your craft. I love it. Yes. And I like the fact that Ari said grace and I just that stuck out for us because Kendra and I um, were both moms, both entrepreneurs, both trying to figure out this podcast stuff. And 
it's different points within our careers where we're really busy, right? So I may do more than she may at some point and vice versa. She may do more when I can't. So just really giving each other grace and be like, you know, we do what we can when we can and we know somebody's going to pick up the slack. And so I think that's great for like a working partnership and just knowing your friend, right? Like they would never do anything to like abuse you know, who's doing more. Cause sometimes one may do more than the other and that's okay. But it's like, as long as it's reciprocated, uh, as long as it's not the same person doing the same things all the time and like doing all of the work, if you give your partner grace, I think you'll be successful. Absolutely. And also just, um, I think was what has helped us is deadlines and making mm -hmm. sure that we stick to the deadlines. Mm -hmm. So once mm -hmm. we enforce the deadlines, we're good. We need to yeah. do better with that, friend. <laughs> well, friend, honestly, I think we do a decent job with that it's because hard. we have like it. We have things that happen every day for the podcast. Yeah. Like there are certain yeah. things that you take care of every day. There are certain things mm -hmm. that I take care of every day, right. and they get done every day. Right. We don't That's have true. like a by twelve o'clock this got to happen yeah. or by eight a.m. this got to happen. It a task gets done every single day by one of us. So yeah. I, I think we actually do a good job with keeping up with the standard that we've set for our podcast That's daily. True. But it's okay if they change too. Cause yeah. we right. do that as well, but it started to not fit our model. Our, mm -hmm. our schedule started to fluctuate. It started mm -hmm. to not be about the day, mm -hmm. but you know how these algorithms go. It started yep. to be about the time. So mm -hmm. then it was about the time. Then it was about, you know, all right. of that. So you just gotta kind of have to roll with the punches. And Don't get us started on the algorithms. Yeah. There was a point <laughs> in time where um, when the pandemic happened, I was in school and Ari stepped up. Mm -hmm. And um, vice versa, whenever she was going through something, I stepped up too. Right. So it's all yeah. about balance. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so all of us are millennial women. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just so much that <laughs> yeah, like shout out to our best, generation. The right, best generation you, ever. The best, like, <laughs> right, you have to start out with that. We're the best. I'm sorry to the baby boomers. I'm sorry like to Gen the, Z. you know, to we're Gen Z. We're literally the bridge. Wait, we're, Gen X. Yeah, whatever. that's a good way to put it. Whoever comes after us, what, what's the next one? <laughs> I don't Gen, know, girl. Gen, Gen I have Z, no idea. Gen Z has been z and like sleep they need to sleep they need to wake up do some work <laughs> like, i like that, that you said that cheryl because we are the bridge but we are the bridge we, there, we, there, saw, the just, we saw the old yeah. stuff and the new stuff yeah literally and we we talked we to our great the internet and, and after the internet yeah that's true yes. before and after but yes mm -hmm. and there's just so much that we have to balance as millennial women like we are used to uh, older ways of thinking. And we're also, right. we're a part of this transition into this newer world that mm -hmm. we're having to get accustomed to. And I just want, you know, you all, your podcast is literally titled the Millenni Her Podcast. Mm -hmm. So can you all share a little bit about your personal experiences and challenges as millennial women in today's world? Go ahead, Cheryl. <laughs> like, <go ahead. laughs> um, I feel like we um we experience a lot of challenges because with the Millennial Her podcast, our thing was that we wanted it from a two black female perspective. Mm -hmm. So you know, nowadays everyone thinks that they're qualified to speak about any topic, mm -hmm. or just everyone has a podcast. Mm -hmm. So with us, we wanted to cater to directly millennials. And we had to kind of come together and realize, like, we don't know it all. Right. Although we've experienced a lot, it's okay to reach out for help, mm -hmm. to make sure that we're actually um, getting evidence-based research. If I'm not versed in it or Ari's not versed in it, then we're reaching out to an expert to make sure that this information is getting out there. And also with our podcast, we want to always give our listeners a tip mm -hmm. or takeaway. So that's like really important. And with this millennial generation, I mean, I feel like millennials, we're always learning and always evolving. So with us being able to give tips, that has like really just helped out our generation in general. Love that. All right. Do you have no, any? The, to you. 
Oh yeah, I was I was right ahead of you, Kendra. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think, no, no, no. I just do what you think. I was cutting you out. Um, no, I was just gonna say that I think it 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 in the foundation is is the is humility is still the grit and the grind Mm -hmm. within our platform and within our generation. Mm -hmm. And so that is the big piece of it, right? Like Cheryl's mentioned, uh, you know, we're bridging the gap. We literally Mm -hmm. take our segments and we shout out local businesses. That's a big part of our platform. That's a big thing I think millennials still do. We're not looking for clout. I'm not then DMing you on the side asking Mm -hmm. me to send me $500 just because I shouted you out on the grid. I'm not doing that. I'm doing that because I love what you're doing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm you, we I still feel like we're part of generation kind of where we kind of should probably shy away from this a little bit. But like that we're still doing things because of our passion. We're not mm-hmm. trying to really just make a buck or a quick buck or to just get some type of fame. We're really trying to show that, you know, what we learned and where we were you can do it and still hold your morals and still have your values and Mm -hmm. still teach and, you know, be the change you want to see. And I think that that's very different from the platform. Some of the platforms, the newer platforms that have come about, the social media platforms that have formed and just kind of creative, creative spaces in general. And definitely, like I said, just the generations after us should should take some notes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, I'm not shy about it. Just take some notes, okay? And we already know that the generations before us, they're going to take notes because they don't know how to work a computer. All they know how to do is write on a pen and paper. Okay, so, you know, we are we are the best. That's all I got to say. They know how to get bridge. on Facebook. <laughs> right? They do be they're on not, Facebook. They're, on like they're not even on, on Facebook. WhatsApp. They be trying WhatsApp. to be cool. Yeah. They be trying to be cool, but it don't work. We literally are the best generation there is. Mm-hmm. My great, I love my Nana to death. I hope, you know, she she is not going to see this. She might, I might give her a clip or something. But my <laughs> great, she, she wanted, she wants to learn, she, iPhone, give me an iPhone. I got an iPhone. Why every week you calling me? Something wrong with her iPhone, her brand new iPhone. I know there's nothing wrong with it. It's you. You're That's trying hilarious. to keep up. You're that. trying to keep up with the Joneses and you can. And then let and then speak to a Generation Z. They don't know what a typewriter is. They don't yeah. know what it was like a to have to type, yeah. type, type. Or even a floppy disk to save. Floppy yeah. disk. Like, Man, you, you brought it back. Yeah, you did. With the <laughs> floppy disk. Ariel, teach your, work with your grandma on that iPhone. Give her a tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> I I will, to I will. Video she's something. trying i will do that <laughs> she's trying yeah but some at least she tried because my mama don't try at all she act older than 61 her phone was on vibrate and she went into the apple store talking about her phone was broke and it wasn't ringing <laughs> what yes I just saw, um it's so it's so funny that you said that because i just saw a meme that was like um grandmas be telling other people that you know how to fix phones yes oh, took it gosh. off the silent yes i was oh, like ma gosh. she's like i don't know what's wrong with this phone it, it's not ringing i'm like ma you just got that phone and then she, i'm going up to the store the lady put took it off vibrate and i was just like this is just go back to your droid like i don't even know what to tell you <laughs> not the droid go back to the droid just go my great so, aunt called um, my husband to help her put her fire stick together. And she she lives in Florida. We're in Georgia. And she he's trying to give her instructions on how to literally just plug the, the fire stick. All you got to do is plug it up to the TV. And that's it. And she was having, they were on the phone for hours. I'm like, bro, all you got to do is just plug the HDMI cord in. But anyways, that's a good so, man. It's a good man because who is her husband is patient. I'll give very him very patient. He patient. He's far more patient than I am. <laughs> but go ahead with your question, Devin. So speaking of that, right, my next question ties in totally into this. So how do y'all navigate the unique blend of a traditional and modern expectations placed on uh, millennial women? So how do y'all navigate that? Like being traditional and then like still trying to be modern with today's times. Like how do y'all? get through that i think it just comes down to authenticity Mm -hmm. like we're just authentic um we speak about what we we cater to like the grassroots like like ari said Mm -hmm. um and i feel like yeah i just feel like it it, it comes down to authenticity Ari, you could piggyback off of that i was gonna ask Devin if if you had uh 
uh, area in mind? Were you more so talking about the pod or were you talking about just in general, just, business? just, just in general of how the millennial as a whole woman is seen, right? Because we were saying like, we still have some traditional things that we are attached to. And then we have some forward thinking things that we're attached to that our parents may not necessarily agree with. So even like as being a parent, like we are trying to practice gentle parenting and my mom for the life of her cannot understand that. And I'm like, yeah, I still set boundaries with my kids. You know, they're not allowed to disrespect me, but I'm not hitting them every chance, every time they do something, I'll be hitting them all day. So yeah. <laughs> like literally every two seconds yes, I'll be yeah. popping them and it's not effective for my boys. Like I understand like their um, love languages and how they need discipline. Every child is different. Some kids may respond to spankings. Mine's don't. So it's just like, you know, just that whole traditional, okay. it could be work. It could be parenthood. It could just be the whole woman in itself so, no, I or herself. Okay. Say. Thank you. Yeah. No, thank you for that context. Um, I, I, I definitely think how, how you, you asked how we navigate. How yeah. We navigate. How do you navigate through it? Okay. So I think it's more so being still a sponge, like being willing, like I'm, I never like to be so rigid to the point where I'm not learning. Mm -hmm. I really am big on student to the game. That's what I feel like has been my x factor on a personal level right I'm, I'm i don't think i know it all and i know i'm smart so i'm in the in between yeah so it's like and, and i use that to learn new things like mm -hmm. you mentioned gentle parenting i didn't know about that until literally six months ago and i watched this hulu show called parent test oh yeah learned all about it love it have been trying exercises ever since mm -hmm. talking about the workplace i was a big a bit feared for a while going with my going with my natural hair humidity wise pooped mm -hmm. out like an afro to mm -hmm. work because i just never seen it um really and then i started to see the you know one thing generate gen z has been doing great mm -hmm. is going out there and you know being their authentic care. self they don't care you know they don't care they're gonna do it they're gonna wear you know all different types of colors things like that and they've been doing it so i've been doing it and i feel like and I feel, I do feel empowered. I totally mm -hmm. get what they're saying. So I feel like those are examples of taking risks, still learning mm -hmm. and, 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 and feeling free. Like these are mm -hmm. all the things that I'm entitled to do. And this is for people, you know, obviously your listeners, mm -hmm. you, it's kind of like understanding you are entitled to learn this. You are mm -hmm. entitled, like you, it's okay to try and pick and choose what works for you and what doesn't mm -hmm. before, you know, back in the older generation, it was kind of like you, you going to do this because everybody else is yeah. doing it. You're not going to go against the status quo. You, you know, and then like we said on the other end of the spectrum, they're like, listen, you're going to take this, <laughs> you know, how I'm giving it to you. And if you don't want to plenty of opportunities out there, right. I think it's more so learning that, um, that it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. That is also, literally not the end. And also to kind of piggyback off what Ari said, it's about breaking generational curses. Mm -hmm. um, we were fortunate to have more um, information than our parents. Mm -hmm. We have the yeah. internet, we have social media, we have mm -hmm. documentaries. Mm -hmm. So some of these stuff is like, although we're learning while it's actually happening right? compared to them. So it's giving yeah. them grace and learning to kind of, have like to forgive and also what i've learned is to have empathy in a way because mm. they don't really know better mm -hmm. even though you would think that they would get with the times but yeah. it's like breaking general breaking we're generation still in a tough group. spot we're in a yeah. tough spot they're still learning from us like mm -hmm. the older generation are still like i.e we're the technicians of phones <laughs> we're, they're still learning from us you know uh we're we're learning from the other generations too and 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 sometimes, you know, it's almost like somebody got to take the L. We're winners in some right and losers in some right, depending right. on how you look at it, just because of our, you know, our our constant battle between traditional and, mm -hmm. you know, new age. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I definitely think that, that is what uh, how we navigate it every day. I think it's, it's tough. Like our generation, it's like our elders look to us to live a life that they couldn't. 
So it's like, oh, y'all have access to so many things. You've been exposed to so many things. You've been able to get the education that I could, and you've been able to get the job that I've dreamed of. And they're they're putting these expectations on us to kind of live through. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's like, I, I hear that, and I respect that, and I'm also trying to, figure out how I'm going to navigate my life without the influence of you and your dreams. Um, while also trying to to figure out a way to get along with this new generation and and the way they do things like, are you said something about Gen Z? They don't give a damn. They don't care. And I can't respect that about them. They don't care. I respect that. And yeah. you got to be able to scale it back sometimes. So it's sometimes. so it's hard mm-hmm. because it's like, how do I balance all of these worlds that are just kind of sitting over our head? And it's like, where, right. where do we fit in? Like we fit right. in, but we don't. So it's, don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's that's a, that was a good question, Devin. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's like we're the little stepchild. You know, yep. the stepchild, the good, that everybody the good loved stepchild. Though. right? The right. good stepchild, <laughs> or Please. I'm trying to understand. Some people say like the middle child, like literally the middle child, and yeah, sometimes, yeah, yeah. Like if you but make then, it great, if you right. don't, you don't. Nobody notice you anyway because they're right. too busy pay- paying attention to the baby, yeah, <laughs> or the <laughs> oldest, the one who, yeah, or the oldest, oldest that was yeah. able to put them in retirement, like right. that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. So to just to kind of um, talk a little bit more about just the experiences of millennial women, when we think about like balancing careers and relationships and just ourselves, like what advice just from your own personal experiences, what advice would you give to other millennial women who may be struggling with how to balance all these areas of, of their life? Oh my gosh, we we actually had an episode like that. Cheryl, yeah. you can continue, but that was literally our first episode like, of, our like, podcast. of our podcast. It was called Go ahead, Cheryl. Twenty five and up club. Can we have it all? Mm. Yeah. Which basically discussed how baby boomers, you know, by twenty five they was married, they had kids, they had the career and everything. But mm. now millennials, we're a bit different. Some of us only want to focus on careers. Some of us don't want to get married. Some mm-hmm. of us don't want to have kids. Um, so we're literally changing the trajectory of what our parents did. Yeah. Um, I guess my advice would be to, I think, um, to always ask for help. I feel like we be so prideful sometimes. Mm-hmm. And also to tap into free resources because there's so much free resources out there that we don't take advantage of. Um, also I'm a big advocate in mental health, you know, go to therapy. If therapy ain't for you, listen to a podcast. If not, watch a documentary, read a book. Um, definitely practice self-care. Make sure you prioritize that. Mm -hmm. I think for me, the way to balance between many of those facets you mentioned, Kendra, amongst other things would be to seriously pick your, your what is it? Um, pick your deal breakers as far as what you want. I'm, 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 I wouldn't say I'm a realist. I'm really not, but I feel like with this and in the, in the, the trials and tribulations I've been going through in life, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know if we truly can have it all in the sense of what you might have imagined when you first mm-hmm. started out in your mm-hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. Like whether it's a professional goal, whether you, you know, whether you've been looking for your man for 10 years and he just hasn't popped up yet or whatever the case may have been, it's hard to kind of want it all, at least at the same time. You have to mm-hmm. kind of decide, I feel like what what you want to work on at the time, how long you're going to work on it. Mm-hmm. It's like when, when you know, career uh, when you're going into a business deal, what's your five year plan? What's your 10 year plan? I know it sounds daunting. No, you don't know what's going to happen in five years. No, you don't know what's going to happen in 10, one, six months even. But it you kind of have to have something to start with so you know where you're going, so you can have a barometer on where you've been, what your, you know, what your process, what your progress has been, or you're okay. really ultimately going to, to your words, Devin, earlier, going to go with the wind. You're just going to be everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Mm-hmm. So also- the way to... I don't think it's truly a balance. I just think it's a 
figure out what you can do today, what you mm-hmm. really need by X amount, and then and then work backwards mm-hmm. in yeah. small goals. And then you might look up and you will be X years old with your husband or your spouse, mm-hmm. your kid or your dog and your career and, and you'll be happy because you you um manage your own expectations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it also comes with having grace for yourself and not comparing yourself to other people. Mm. Mm. Get yeah, off social I, media. I was yeah. just about to say that. I think social media is a blessing, but also a curse um, because it's great for a lot of things when you're trying to learn and things like that. But I can just remember when I was in my 20s, right? And then seeing like people with like cars and houses and nice weddings and all. And I'm like, well... How they afforded this? One, I learned very quickly. People just put on, mm-hmm. um, and a lot of times that stuff is not even real. Mm-hmm. Um, but two, it's it's hard not to not compare sometimes, right? Especially when you're not when you thought you was going to be. So taking those break from social media, I think is great. Um, right now, unfortunately, I don't really use social media outside of working for the Real Mama Pod because <laughs> it's everything is content, right? So it's just like, okay, how can we grow and organically? grow and get to know our followers and things like that so i don't have time to compare and now that i'm in my 30s i don't give a shit what people are doing Mm -hmm. um so i think i'm just like i'm just trying to live life with these kids and his husband and try to survive that and if that's if that's what if that's the life for you you get right like right you look up you don't have time to pay attention to right. that. Now yeah. you look up and you are where you want to be. Yeah. You don't have time to be doing that and still take care of your boys, take care of your yeah. husband, take care of yourself, get your chemical pill. Right. And it's, you don't have time to do right. it. You just don't have time. Right. You yeah, don't. You yeah, don't. So I do, I and I agree with you, I think you can have it all, but just in doses, right? Like, don't think you can have it all, all in At one setting. At the same setting. time. No, it's yeah, not going to happen that timelines. way. Like, yeah, I, I don't put timelines like, on yourself. Don't create timelines for yourself. Yeah. Because like, mm-hmm. your blessing is coming. It's coming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm a if firm you want it, and everything happens yeah. when it's supposed to. Yeah, absolutely. And you, and I know you guys are familiar with this where they said, um, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Right. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, you can have it all, just all, not at the same time. <laughs> No, for real. And then honestly, when you get to a certain place and you realize it's not what you thought it was, you may change it what your all looks like. You yeah. might be content with just chilling. You'd be like, oh, this is too right. stressful. I don't want this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought I wanted a job, but now I want to be a stay at home wife. Keep oh, saying it every day. everything that glitters. Keep saying every gold. day, girl. I, we, me and Kendra was that, and we quickly resigned. So, more power <laughs> to you. Bless your heart, Ariel. Bless your heart. That was the hardest job I've ever had. Was being at yeah. home. I love my son to death. That's my mm-hmm. baby. I wouldn't trade him for the world. And being at home with him for almost eighteen months while my mm-hmm. husband was working, and I'm here solely. Mm-hmm. care for him on the phone all with me day. me and Devin. this is how this podcast started quietly um <laughs> but it's just not for it's not for me but i my heart soul yes. and everything in me goes out to stay at home moms y'all yes. are the true just yes. everything the world needs because yeah. i i can't, yes. I can't the true it. heroes yes yeah, those um, the heroes that don't wear capes yeah. those are the heroes mm-hmm. that don't wear capes <laughs> boy oh yeah so bless you Ari so this concept of work-life balance is evolving right um what strategies have you guys found effective in maintaining a healthy work-life harmony is it a such thing there is a such thing okay um I think it goes back to what your previous question about friendships and creating boundaries knowing that when it's time to work on a podcast, it's time to work on a podcast. Mm-hmm. But like Ari said, if we're out at a social event, it's like this is not the right time to be talking about the podcast. So mm-hmm. it's like having boundaries, knowing that for us, it's like we set a specific time to have fun, to socialize, and then we set a specific time to just work on business. Mm-hmm. I do believe that there is a work-life balance however i do feel like there are some sacrifices that come 
with work life balance and mm-hmm. you have like whatever it may be, whatever the dynamic may look like, there are sacrifices um and there and for like, maybe even consider consequences because you want to like mandate that. So like so like for example, me coming from a journalism background, I would work 60 hours a week plus 60 plus hours a week. And that you that happened really when the girls I have twins. That happened when they were first born and they were um and I would miss I want to say the first year of their life. I really want to say not year. The first like to the first year till they turned 2 of their life. Like a lot of it cuz I was up at 4. I didn't get home till 9. They were with my husband a lot of the time mm-hmm. and I missed a lot of milestones. Did not enjoy it at all. I but that was the game. That was the deal. <laughs> like you you had to be gone. That was production life. I said, okay, well then production life. I gotta go. Like I gotta go. Like I can't be doing this. I don't feel right. It's not conscious like for me. Cannot do it. Um, that's an example. Going home with a cell phone. That was too much for me. If mm-hmm. I gotta still work with a cell phone, you calling me Saturday, ask me about your problems, that's a lot for me. Mm-hmm. That doesn't create balance. I'm on a date and I'm calling you being your therapist. That's that's <laughs> too much for me. You know, like that was a lot. And so it took me to take a step back. But what I got out of it was learning other passions, learning other trades, learning other um of other other skills that I had. And I and I found other blessings because of it. But but at the time, there was no work-life balance. If I still was stuck on me wanting to go in this career route, what would my work-life balance have been? I either would have chose to be more involved in my kid's life or I would have chose to, you know, be more in production. I might have been some top producer by now, but where would I be with my children and relationship? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But do I miss being full-time in production? At very much times I do because right. that was my first love. So that's why I feel like, yes, you can have that balance if you decide what that balance looks like, but there may be there may be consequences or or sacrifices that come with that. And mm-hmm. you have to just find peace within that yeah. overall. Yeah. I can agree that's, with you, Ariel. Um I the work that I do, I love. Like I'm a hundred percent passionate about it. And it takes a lot of my time, um, mainly with traveling. And I have a young son, so I want to make sure I'm physically as present as I possibly can. I mean, that's my priority in all honesty. And it's because this is my first year in this space, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like how to make sure I set this boundary of I can travel this much for work because mm-hmm. I still have a family at home that is my priority. Um, Mm -hmm. so that is, is honestly something I'm, I'm still trying to figure out. Um, because thankfully my job is super supportive of families, but they also like the communities that we serve, they have a need. So we have to meet the needs of our community, um, Mm -hmm. and make sure we're meeting the needs of our home. So, um, now that I'm, I'm getting into, I guess my, one year anniversary, I have an idea of how I'm going to move forward with making sure my life balance, my at home life is balanced with my work life as well. So mm-hmm. um, totally understand um, where you're coming from, Ari. And it's good that you've like I, my family is my priority and it as it should be. And you've sacrificed at least you've made this small sacrifice right now until you figure out what works best for you. Um, it, you know, sometimes that's just what we got to do. Dude. As moms and, and women in general. But you know what I find difficult to really come to peace with is I feel like that is really with the, the moms and the millennial women of the world, right? I'm speaking to all the millennial women listening and all the millennial moms and really moms in general because I feel like our, our, our men don't get that same, uh, don't get that same problem with work-life balance i feel like that really comes on our that really bears on our shoulders oh no Um. Mm -hmm. i've had this (laughs) conversation because my dad is me and my dad are really close um and i i talk to him often about just the opportunities that come up for me at work and 
He's like, take those opportunities. You go after, you do this, you do that. And I'm like, I appreciate you rooting for me. And I still have to be mindful that I have a family at home that I have to be, I have to care for. And while my husband yeah. supports me 100%, he supports me over 100%, to be honest, I still need to be home. Right. I still need to be present in, in my son's life and not always on the road for work. So um, while daddy, I support, I appreciate your support. I got it. I got it. <laughs> you know, my full sit on down <laughs> sometimes. Right. I know. Then be like, where's you at now? I That's like, where keep up. going? Yeah, she can't. I can't keep, I don't even try to keep up with that schedule no more. It's too, before I used to know. And now I'm like, girl, where you at? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when you get there. You never answered, Devin. Do you believe in a work-life balance? I do. Um, so I was initially, um, I experienced burnout very early on in my career. And so where I was having like panic attacks and anxiety attacks, bringing work home, like just not taking care of myself, right? Um, and quit a job or two or three before with no plan. Um, and so really those panic attacks really forced me to have a work-life balance. So now I don't take work home. I don't even have an email on my phone for work. I get it when I get to work. <laughs> like, I'm not checking no emails. <laughs> no, you can't have my number. Here's my office phone. Oh, yeah, I don't want to give me an office phone. Well, contact me through the front office. I don't know what to tell you. Um, so, yeah, I don't... Um, I don't do that anymore. I set boundaries and when it gets done, it gets done. I try my best. I do meet my deadlines and I do do what I need to do during those work hours. After that, I, I don't have nothing for you. So I'm going to put me first, Lucius. Yeah. I'm going to put me first. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah. Because. Yeah, Cause seriously, because I, I to you, they're gonna replace they gonna you. Replace you. Yep. They're gonna replace you. So, yep. and I work with hard deadlines. Like my deadlines are federal deadlines. Like we cannot be late. You know, mm -hmm. so it's just like you just have to be strategic. You have to plan your day out. And from seven thirty to uh, three thirty, that's that's when y'all got me. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good conversation move on to mama juice yeah. i just want to shout out our sponsors for oh, the show absolutely um so we've been working really hard to get some sponsors and we're getting sponsorships and this is Thank so you. exciting <laughs> so our first sponsor is selfie skin co and we've actually been wearing their or excuse me not wearing, wearing using, using. <laughs> You see the glow? You see the glow? <laughs> and so we are absolutely falling in love with this uh, skincare line. Absolutely. Um, so definitely give that a try. And then who's our next sponsor? We also have North 24. We actually we have some of them yeah, displayed here. I don't know if you all can see. Uh, but North 24 is, or North 24th, excuse me, is a natural cleaning mm -hmm. line. Yeah. And their products smell so good. Yeah. What we have here is the lavender and patchouli like all, all purpose, all purpose mm -hmm. cleaning and it is it smells so good and, and it works literally works yeah so definitely give north 24th a try yes and selfie skin co yes we're going oh, oh yes get <laughs> you see <that. laughs> you see that. Yes. absolutely we have a sponsor which is poised wine it's right here we have a sweet dry white wine and we also have uh, a sparkling rosé here yeah that was a great <laughs> yeah, conversation great. and you know, it's time to get into our next segment of Mama Juice. Because oh. this was a juicy, good conversation. I think it's time for some cocktails. It so, friend, what are we drinking tonight? It or you was. ladies, I gave up sugar, so I won't be partaking. In you gave drinking, up sugar? Yeah, we, I forgot to tell you. Girl, we're doing a fast with the church. Oh, praise the Lord. So, mm -hmm, amen. Praise um, the Lord. So, no sugar for me, so I won't be drinking. For how long? It's 30 days. Praise Jesus. How many days no. in are we? This is, we didn't even get to, Sunday would make seven. So what, where are we at? <laughs> where, five, five, four? Five, four yeah. For, yeah it, four or five. One at four. Somewhere around there. I know my math be off. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> well, I'm wishing you the best friend. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so for those of you listening for the first time, Mama Juice is my favorite segment of the show. Um, we curate drinks to 
uh, speak to our guest. And we're lucky mm-hmm. enough to have two beautiful young black women here, yeah. millennial women. And we always ask, what is your beverage of choice? And Ariel and Cheryl have vastly different beverages of choice. <laughs> so we had to. So that means you got to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> So we had to get creative. I'm like, what can we make? Because Ariel likes a lemon. She's very specific. Lemon drops topped with Prosecco, which sounds delicious, by the way. And then Cheryl just keeps it simple. She likes her Merlot. She's grown and sexy with it. So I said, why don't we just kind of mix the two? Not, not, not to the T, but we have this drink is called I'm Every Woman because we are every woman and it is kind of like a red wine spritzer that's how i would describe it so it has merlot which is cheryl's favorite type of dry red wine and (laughs) you mix that in oh she got hurt come on cheryl's you have go add these ingredients to your red wine a half an ounce of grand marnier and you top it with sparkling Sicilian lemonade. That's two Ariel's lemon drop. And then you have ice, fresh lemon wedges or wheels. And you have a mint garnish. So it's like a dry red wine with a little bit of that uh, Grand Marnier, which is a, a liqueur. And then you top it with a Sicilian lemonade, which is a sparkling lemonade from Fever Tree is my favorite brand there. So if you are a mama to be or you do not like to drink alcohol which is totally fine we have mocktail versions and you will just replace that red wine with pure cranberry juice so you'll still have that dry red feel topped with the sicilian sparkling lemonade uh, and you'll use non-alcoholic triple sec instead of the grand marnier and that is wait so you create these yes yes okay i thought you was getting this from a, a book no, no. These, we might have a mama, okay, ma- mama juice one day. <laughs> <laughs> one day, mama juice is gonna be a recipe book. Yes, one day, yes, I love that. I'm gonna yes. have to send you that recipe. We yes. got you. Try it. We got it's you. I'm still add prosecco on top of mine. Do, do, do. A little splash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you how it goes. <laughs> tell, tell you, yeah, tell me how that turn out. But that is well, our. You have to make that today. for me, friend. It sounds good. I got you. Good. I got you. Mm. Okay, so Mama's Corner is my favorite segment of the show, and this is our opportunity to connect with our guests further and our listeners. So typically, our listeners write in a question, and um, we give advice based on our experiences, not as experts. Or sometimes we can be reflective, and I feel like this conversation has been so great that we should be reflective. So I do have an additional question for you ladies, okay? So technology has changed the way we connect. How has this impacted millennial women's relationships, both in dating and maintaining friendships? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody All is jumping at that time. question. <laughs> oh, man. Good question. Charles, okay. It is a good question. It's just too real for folks, I feel. Be um, real. This is the real mom yes, pie. this is the real this the mama, mama pie. pie. Too real. <laughs> too real. Um, uh, ha- okay, so you said... Say say the p- beginning of yeah. the question again. So technology has changed the way we connect. How has the impact, uh, excuse me, how has this impacted millennials, women's relationships in both in dating and maintaining friendships? Well, how it has affected relationships. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I feel like it depends on how you look at it. I, I, a lot of my friends who on social media and relationships who are married um, or are getting married, they said they met their spouse online. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, that that's been the best thing that somebody popped in their DM. That's all in the bows that right. you popped in the DM. It's great for them. But then on the other hand, I feel like it takes out the element of surprise, the effort, the courting. I hear that a lot, the courtship or, you know, just the respect level, you know, where's your sense of privacy? Where, you know, where, where do you keep the good things to yourself anymore? Mm-hmm. Again, to you talk about when you're comparing your life to someone else's, okay, now you're comparing your dating relationship to someone else's. Oh, you're not whining and dining me, the city girls of people or the sexy reds of people, oh, or, Lord. you know, just, just trying to get them and go or whatever. You can get STDs, right? Right. Yeah. Don't she promote right. STDs like, or something? I don't know. Oh, I can't get with it. Child. Sexy reds, a little girl from St. Louis. 
the see. brown brown to town you. town pound pound so, town we you sound know. old you know, nobody I, so, promoting I know, STDs I know, who, yeah she said I, I want an STD she's talking about her oh, wow. the color of her booty hole that's all yeah, I know that's all I know it's vicious you hear about that no the girls I'm with you girl it's nothing but here where's about where's the essence right where's the essence of like the element of surprise your womanhood you know all of that that yeah. affects your dating you want to be treated like a woman but you know or like a respectful woman that's going to be courted and brought home to your parents in a respectful way but you may not be putting your best foot forward or the at least the image you're trying to portray mm-hmm. as far as girlfriends and relationships it's just real simple that i feel like it should be women like we we it comes off this facade that we're doing women empowerment, mm-hmm. but behind closed doors is not necessarily that case. It was speak to this, our relationship right here. I'm very pleased that when we all connected, it was, it was just all great energy. And it was, it was a blessing that, you know, not every creator has offered us in, in coordinating, you know, with projects and wanting to collaborate new relationship i feel like relationships are formed between us and it's real simple so social media has work you know it Mm -hmm. i wouldn't we wouldn't have known you without it Mm -hmm. but at the very same time too it's a crab in a barrel mindset of like you know does that mean real mama pa gotta make it or millennia her it's gotta be one it can't be both it's like no we have a space for for Uh, all of us we remember we're the bridging of the gap generation Mm -hmm. like we 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 can we can support each other lift each other up however you do it and we do it but together and it's gonna be fine because what like what you said kendra what's for you is for you Mm -hmm. what will be will be so that's how i feel like it's affected in both relationships and um, friendships Yeah. yeah what about you charles I feel like when it comes to dating specifically, um, social media has played a major role where people can't be authentic anymore and just Mm -hmm. have natural conversations. People want to be on their phones. People want to be posting the food. People Mm want to be posting a viral moment of somebody treating the radar wrong to go Mm -hmm. viral. And that just takes out the essence of actually getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. As for friendships, it can be a, a pro too because like us we connected we live in different states so we were able to use like social media to connect Mm -hmm. so i feel like it's a gift and a curse in a way kind of like what ari said Mm -hmm. yeah i agree um i think for social media for me i forget to connect to people sometimes because i see like them on social media so i feel like i've talked to them and then when i actually pick up the phone and talk to them, i'm like dang it's been months since we talked mm-hmm. but i feel like i talked to you just yesterday because i saw your post i commented i was in your stories we were dming but we haven't really had a conversation mm-hmm. so i do miss that um with my friend groups and you know as we get older it gets harder anyways but i feel like social media has helped us in that sense but also like hinder us because we feel like we talk to that person we really haven't um i don't know about dating i heard it's rough out here i believe it um <laughs> look y'all are so lucky i found my my husband at 19 i held on to him because i just i remember it was a college professor dr him wade god rest his soul so uh we <laughs> this is what he, this is what he did you have dr him i did did you he told us, this is my freshman year, he said, girls, I'm going to tell y'all like it is, and I'm glad I listened to this man because I ain't have nobody tell me this. You find your husband in college. And, you know, don't be playing around with these too. boys. He said, don't be playing around with these boys. Don't be opening your legs up to everybody. And, you know, these boys. Just, Can you say that in class? Baby, yes. We went to HBCU. University, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like a to give so, Professor Hemingway a southern black man. Oh, he did. Yeah. So, oh. um, yes, I said God rest his soul. But that was the oh, really advice I ever gotten from a male. Like, I was not thinking about a husband. And he was like, hang out at the pharmacy building. Hang out at the school of engineering. Where to hang he out? told us where to go. Okay. He's looking out. 
Pat, he said, you don't want them frat boys. You don't want that. He he laid it out, okay? Oh. And I listened to him. Now, I did meet my husband at a wing spot. So I did, but he ended up being an architecture student, which is good because he wasn't out on the Close scene. Enough. Right. He is well, exactly what I needed, but I was like, oh, that is my husband because Dr. Hemingway said, find your husband in college. And well, that was funny. the best advice I can get. So I could care. <laughs> I found my husband in college too, so I believe okay. it. Um, we didn't yeah. go to the same one, but still in college. Okay. So, um, y'all are that—that that was funny to me. Um, <laughs> I, I had Dr. Hemingway. It wasn't. I don't think me and Devin were in the same class, but mm-hmm. I can, I can hear him. You can picture it. that, right? Exactly. Um, so, <laughs> I think technology. Uh, one of you said it's a blessing and a curse, and I agree. Um, mm-hmm. As as far as relationships. Even though I I met my husband in person before we actually got together, let him tell it. I slid in his DMs to get with him, but I was really trying to try some pure white Hennessy that he posted on Instagram. So I did slide in his DMs like he well, he, so he had a connect that went like overseas and they brought back some pure white Hennessy. And at that time we were in Tallahassee. We were in grad school. I never tried pure white Hennessy and I saw he posted it on Instagram. So I was like, oh, I want to try some. But I wasn't trying to try him. I was trying to try the Hennessy. <laughs> but dead. that was on Instagram, which is social media technology. Um, So I, I guess we kind of hooked up via technology but not really um but what i can in terms of friendships what i can appreciate about technology is that i am able to see what my friends are up to in life like people that i went to high school with people that i went to elementary school with people i went to middle school with even family that i hadn't seen in years like i'm able to just see what's going on in their worlds via social media but i think the curse in that is that we don't make time to actually connect with them because we see them on social media. Like, I don't feel like I have to always pick up the phone. I'm not a phone person anyway. So that just makes it worse for me. Like I see, Oh, Hey, everything's going well. But if something happens and of course I'm like, Hey, like, how are you? How are things going? But even in that way, like I think texting um, is also a crutch from like really connecting with people. I'll send a text message quick. I don't like being on the phone. I just don't. There are certain people that I talk to on the phone and we got to be talking about something or I'm like, I'll talk to you later. I just I don't like being on the phone. But I, I when getting back to social media, um, I think it is, again, that blessing and that curse because I can really keep up with people. But it also is that crutch because it doesn't we don't have the real intention behind connecting with our peers and family and whomever. So. um I, I love technology and I hope I wish we didn't rely on it so much. It also yeah. takes away from living in the moment too. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You saw that my husband, he hates it. He'd be like, Oh, if you don't have a picture, it didn't happen, huh? Yeah. So he wants to live in the moment. <laughs> he wants the phones off dead in the car, lost in the ocean. He, he could be detached from his phone. Yeah. Um, and me, I'm like, no, we have to capture this, especially if it's the boys. Like if it's their first something, I'm like, and if he doesn't, and I'm not there, I'm pissed off. Cause I know he didn't take a picture. I'm like, did you get a picture? Right. No. And I'm like, but I wasn't there to experience it. Can you at least capture Try. the moment? try at least you know i'm gonna want to see it but um yeah so they don't be caring don't jonathan don't like they he don't. don't he didn't completely neglect an instagram he still has an account mm-hmm. but i don't think that man has logged on in two years mm-hmm. just there just deactivated yeah. at this just point there just there for whenever he yeah he wants whenever if ever mm-hmm. so charles and ari how can people find you if they want to connect with you so you can connect with us on Instagram or any other platform at the Malini Her Podcast. We have three seasons out right now. We're on YouTube. We're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcasts. My personal Instagram is I underscore surely rejoice. But instead of the S's with the five. Okay. And if you're uh, more of a Gen X person and still logging on websites, you can Find us at Millennial Her minus the dash pod, millennialherpod.com. 
Um, you can also support small business uh, by uh, our merch as we're wearing. You know, <laughs> Millennia Her, Millennia Him, Millennia Us, and Rock It With a Mama Hat. Yes. And, um, and yeah, just follow us for more on those uh, on that great content. And my personal Insta is Ariel underscore Ryan, just like in the screen. All right, and we'll have all that in our description box. Kendra's very good about doing that. So, again, ladies, thank you so much for your time. We really enjoyed y'all, and we can't wait to have y'all back. Yes, Thanks indeed. for having us. All right, have a good night. To all so much for joining us at the Real Mama Pod. Yes, every Thursday night, y'all could be anywhere, but you're hanging out with us. Yes, and we love it. So, friend, where can they find you? They can find me anywhere they like. Mm-hmm. I'm on Instagram at Kendra Ferg underscore. And I'm also on Facebook, Kendra Ferguson. Okay. What about you? And you can reach me at Deb Grace underscore. Instagram, TikTok. Pinterest. Pinterest. Twitter. Facebook, Twitter. Mm-hmm. All of that at The Real Mama Pod. Pod. Yeah. So make sure you follow us. If you want to learn more about Kendra and I, you can uh, check out our website where we have Mama Merch. Hey, you can see our little sweatshirts. Oh, right. Yeah. We are wearing our Mama Merch. Yeah, we have sweatshirts, hats, necklaces. We also have Rich Auntie Merch. Um, so you can purchase that at www.therealmamapod.com. <laughs> We're so corny. I know.